Hiya. Happy Saturday or whatever. Nice to see you. Hope you're well. Hope everything's going as good as it can for you. The weird weeks continue for me at work. And I'm not even I'm not even going to get into it. I'm going to get right into this because the new square push realm, by the way, Dostra time. I think that's how you say it. I don't really care how you say it. And I, I really wanted I want I really want to do this review because I've seen a couple of video reviews already of this album on YouTube, and it's just like fingernails on a chalkboard. You know, you, you ever have those artists where you just love them so much, and you hear other people talking about them, and you don't you don't hear any passion in their voice. You just hear them using generic genre terms to describe their music and their experience with the music, and you just know they're not really a fan. They're just talking about it because it's a new album. I mean, if you want to know what I'm talking about, I recommend you just you Google Square Pusher Dostra Time album review and a couple of dorks will pop up and they just don't know what the fuck they're talking about. It's just uh, it drives me crazy. I'm very protective of Tom Jenkinson. I love this guy. I've been listening to him for 30 years now. And when I hear people talk about his music you, and, and you can see that they don't really have passion for his music, I just want to punch him. You know, it's like, get the fuck off my feed. Why are you talking about music you don't understand, you're not passionate about, you don't love, you don't know? Go away. You just People put YouTube material out there just to fill up space, just as clickbait fodder, you know? There's a new album out, so they know people are going to be searching for it. Well, I'm talking about Square Pusher because I love this guy. I've been, I have been deeply listening to this man's music for 30 years now, and I know a lot about him, and I love his music, and you're going to see a lot of passion when I talk about this. Because I love Tom Jenkinson, I worship this guy, and this is a bold statement, I know, but he's my favorite warp artist. I've had this conversation with several of my friends who love the warp label, as most people who love music do, especially if you love electronic music. And yeah, I, I rank him above Aphex Twin, Boards of Canada, Autechre, Plaid, Black Dog, all of that. This guy is at the top of the heap for me, and I'll try to explain why. I appreciate people who don't agree with me. That's fine. But for me personally, this guy. This guy is the king of the warp pack. I love him. I think he represents something truly original and strikingly fresh. Every single time he puts out an album, it's like it's unlike anything I've ever heard. I don't want to talk about the other reviewers too much. I don't want I don't want my disdain to bleed through this whole review, but um these other reviewers just don't seem to understand this guy's hold and thumbprint and footprint on music especially electronic music. This guy's a true original. He's right up there with Richard James and any any person you can name, in my opinion. So be careful of what you say about Tom Jenkinson, because I'm, I'm going to come after you. This guy is a true visionary and genius, if you ask me. This dude is on, an, he's from another planet. The aliens came and dropped him off on our planet Earth, and now he's just showing it how it's done on other planets and in other universes. Okay, so anyway, uh, I just got, can you tell? I just got done watching a few other reviews on YouTube, and I'm just irritated. <laughs> it's like, just shut the fuck up if you don't know what you're talking about. Why are you talking about music and artists that you don't have passion for? I don't get it. Dostro time. This record I listened to this a number of times this week. And by the way, you can't find this on Apple Music. I don't know if it's getting released later. Square Pushers, pretty much his entire catalog is on Apple Music, but you can't find this on there yet. You have to buy the physical version, as far as I can tell. Maybe Bleep has it. I'm sure if you pre-ordered the vinyl or bought the vinyl on Bleep, you probably have a download version of it. But... I haven't been able to find it streaming, which is kind of cool. If you want to hear this whole album, as far as I know, you have to buy a physical copy of it in some way. And I'll just show this physical copy 
real quick. This is a double album, as most of his albums are. This came out on pink vinyl. I didn't get that one. Um, here's the gatefold. It is a gatefold sleeve. And it comes with some very boring generic inner sleeves, but they are polyline, which is cool. Warp was thinking about that. And mine's on plain old boring black wax. It's a good press, just like anything on Warp. I was going to get the pink vinyl, but it was more expensive, and the shipping was crazy expensive, and I just thought, you know what, it's not that important for me to have pink plastic over black plastic. This is going to sound better anyway. So, good for you if you got the pink wax. I skipped it. Square Pusher, why do I feel the way I do about Tom Jenkinson? I, I feel the way I do about Tom Jenkinson because I just think he represents something wholly original just like richard james does just like a attacker does plaid black dog any of the pla any of the warp greats you can think of richard kirk you know he's at the top for me and i think because for me personally square pusher has never put out a bad album and this is where some annoyance is going to percolate again to the surface in terms of other reviews i've been seeing of this people always want to use some stupid genre term like idm square pusher put out another idm album shut the fuck up okay sit and listen to the music and understand its influences and its impact in the society in which it's released that is important when you're talking about music you have to be objective this is something that reviewers sadly lack in my opinion they're so subjective you know like well i think this sounds like that and that sounds like this and uh, uh compared to this other legacy artist uh, shut up you don't know what you're fucking talking about all right square pusher has never put out a bad album if you appreciate music that doesn't sound anything else like anything else you've ever heard that's what this man does because you don't understand it is a good thing that's not the music's fault that's your fault and that's what tom jenkinson does Every album he's ever put out is challenging. Why? Because we're not attuned to be challenged when it comes to music. As humans, we're used to putting a record down on the turntable or turning a download on our iPhone or wherever you're listening to music, and we know what we're getting more or less before we even push play. We see an artist, we see a label, and in our minds we make a connection. And we do that to Square Pusher to some degree. But something that Square Pusher does better and more effectively than any other artist on this planet, in my opinion, is that he keeps us on our toes. This guy does not deliver your expectations. There have been plenty of Square Pusher albums that I've heard in my lifetime where I heard them and I didn't know what the fuck to do with it. I was like, oh, wow, that wasn't what I was expecting. That's the beautiful thing. Why would you want to live in a world where you know exactly what you're getting every time? And that's that's the argument I would posit to these other these other dopey YouTube reviewers. Think outside of your tiny little linear box for once, okay? D dare yourself to be challenged by music. No one does it better than this man, okay? Period. Think objectively. Think of the world that exists around this music and, and upon which it's released. Don't think of some other album that came out 40 years ago. Don't think of some album that came out 10 years ago. Tune out the noise, I dare you. This is why it's tough for people to meditate. You have to tune out the noise. Let this take you over. Let it wash over you like a warm blanket. Just let it take you somewhere. Stop comparing it to everything else, okay? The world will, op will open up to you in a very positive light if you just... Open your mind up a little bit. Square Pusher's not interested in giving you what you expect, man. He never has been interested in that. And that's why he's never put out a bad album. Yes, sometimes it takes a couple of years, maybe. Months, years, minutes, hours, days, I don't know. Depends on how, how well you can tune out the noise. But sometimes it takes a long time for Square Pusher albums to, to break through your psyche and for you to understand it. That is a beautiful thing. 
don't criticize something because you don't understand it. Okay. And I think that's why Square Pusher has over the years taken some hits in terms of his reviews. I celebrate this man because of it. I think that in terms of warp, there's no more unpredictable artist ever than this man right here. He's done, obviously, he's done more stuff like drum and bass and acid and techno and stuff like that. But he's also done like funk. Do you remember that the album? What was it called? Showbeleader? He did an album that sounded like Prince. I mean, it was it was Prince inspired almost. It was a beautiful record. That one took a while for me to understand, but it, it grew on me. Just like everything. This, sometimes his albums hit me right away. And I love them right away. And some don't. But how many artists can you think of who's been putting out who, who've been putting out albums for 30 years can do that to you? I can't really think of any. This man, every time he puts out an album, you're like, okay, what are we getting now? What's it gonna be? Some of my favorite albums from Square Pusher, I mean, the things that come to mind are I love Hard Normal Daddy. Hard Normal Daddy is one of my favorites. Music is Rotted One Note is one of my favorites. Uh, Big Loda, which is an EP. And in fact, if I had to do the cardinal sin of comparing this album to, to one other Square Pusher release, it might be Big Loda. But those are my favorite releases from Square Pusher. And those records really don't have a ton in common. They're all very different. Ufa Bulum, the, the record he put out a little over a decade, a decade ago, is, is beautiful. His last album before this one is beautiful, too. They're all different, though. But the one through line with Square Pusher Records, I think, all of his music is always rooted in jazz. You know what I'm talking about? You Square Pusher fans know what I'm talking about, I think, I hope. His, his records, yeah, they, they'll have this element, that element. It's always housed and, and encased in electronic music in some way. But I think jazz is the underlying through line and current to all of his releases. And he's a, you know, he's a, a trained bassist. I mean, have you heard this guy's bass work? A lot of people think this guy's just a, a someone who sits in the studio and makes electronic computer music. But the guy's like a virtuoso bass player. And if you've ever seen him live, you know what I'm talking about. This guy is an amazing bassist. And I think, again, that's his through line with his music. It's jazz. And I think jazz kind of stands alone in that world of experimentation. And that's why his music is always, I mean, you could take every one of his albums and every one of his albums goes in a different, slightly different direction. And that's what this album does. I love this new album. I think it's his best album he's done in maybe two decades. Love it. And why do I love it so much? Because I think it's hearkening back to his early sound. There's a lot of like that, that early 90s squelchy acid drum and bass kind of sound, drill and bass, they used to call it. There's a lot of that going on here. But there's that jazz element too. The opening track on here is like a, you know, a, a quiet ambient jazzy track and then it just explodes into this other this other thing but this other vibe but what, another thing that square pusher does so well is like his sounds are very abrasive they're very aggressive and in your face but then it's there's always always this underlying beauty and melody that's always there just heartbreaking melodies are always kind of percolating at the surface he doesn't ever it's rare that he shoves them in your face but they're always there if you want to stop and listen for it that's the beauty about Square Pusher for me. When I think of Square Pusher, I think he is the greatest artist in terms of music that is abrasive and loud and even hard to take in some moments, but at the same time is so subtle and sensitive and beautiful. It's all happening at once. It, you have to listen to it multiple times for it to really sink in. And I think that's why a lot of people, when they review this guy, Reviews come out very quickly. When an album gets released, you see reviews that week. But Square Pusher isn't really an artist that you can review right away. And I know I'm doing that very thing right now. But I've listened to this album several times this week. And listening to this reminds me of 
one of the main reasons I love Square Pusher and that his music is so dense. It's so layered. It's so multifaceted. There's so much shit going on. You can't put a genre tag on this music. It's impossible. And when I see people do it, it, it bothers me because you're just dismissing what this music can offer you. There's so much that's offered with this kind of music. And you're turning yourself off to it if you just want to come up with one or two tags for it. No, that's a mistake. You can't do that with Tom Jenkinson's music. You can't do it. This music is some of the most complicated, beautiful music you will ever hear. And that is definitely true of this new album, Dostro Time. And again, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I don't think it matters. Does it really matter how you pronounce it? I mean, some of his stuff, look at these song titles. Do you think, do you think Tom Jenkinson is worried about how you pronounce his shit? I don't think so. Whatever. There you go. Three tracks per side, 12 tracks total. Those of you who like 90s era square pusher, you're going to have a lot to celebrate here, I think. But something that he does really well is he's kind of, he's taking the old and he's marrying it with the new. I reviewed an album earlier this week for the new Fortet album, and I was talking about what I liked about that. He, Kieran Hebden kind of does the same thing with the new Fortet album. He's taking old, and he's, and he's marrying it with the new, and I think that's kind of what Square Pusher does here a little bit, too. It's a lot more than that. Don't just, when I'm, when I'm reviewing that, don't just hear what I'm saying about the old marrying the new and think, oh, okay, that's what it sounds like. It's so much more than that. It's way more complicated than that. But I'm, I'm offering that as like an entry, entry point for you. You old school fans will find plenty to love about this, but he, he updates it. And it's a beautiful album. Those of you who like to be truly challenged, you like to, you like to listen to music that you've never heard before, music that inspires you to do something new, look no further than this man. And the beauty of, of Tom Jenkins' music is you can pull any album he's released in the last 30 years and none of it's aged. It's all equally, completely brilliant and inspiring music. It's very timeless in that way. A lot of people think of electronic music as having, you know, only existing in its time and place. And that's true for a lot of electronic music. It's, it sounds, it's, it can sound very dated because there was a moment where it came and it went and now it sounds dated. Not here, man. Any, any square pusher record you can find hasn't dated a day. I mean, you, you could take Feed Me Weird Things, which was his first album, and listen to it today and think, well, that could have come out today. And you could listen to this in the context of Square Pusher Records and, and think, wow, this came out 25 years ago? Holy shit, this is brilliant. But it doesn't make it any less brilliant that it's coming out in 2024. I hope that makes sense. This guy just doesn't put out uninteresting music. It's always to, very titillating to the senses in every way. Tom Jenkinson. I can't think of an artist that has inspired me and not just musically, but just inspired me to go and do things. You know, sometimes music just puts a spring in your step. Sometimes you're having a hard time getting going during the day. And a piece of music can motivate you to go do something. That's what this man does for me. For 30 years now, I put this guy's music on and my brain is fizzing and popping. I, I feel like my brain is a, the inside of my skull is a better place because of this man. Absolutely one of my favorite artists that has ever existed, Dostro Time. Listen to this album. And yeah, go check, go check out the other reviews if you want. They're terrible. I'm very, I'm very protective of Tom Jenkinson's music. I get irritated and pissed off <laughs> when I see other dopes mumbling about music that they don't appreciate or understand. Go, go review the newest Taylor Swift album, dipshits. If that's what you're into, stay away from artists like this because you don't understand what you're talking about. This is a brilliant, th those types of artists, top 40 artists wish they had, you see this, the end of my pinky. Tom Jenkinson has more talent in the very end of my pinky than those other top 40 artists have throughout their entire body. This dude's from, he's an alien. Accept it. Appreciate it. 
You want inspiring music for uninspired times, look no further than Tom Jenkinson's Square Pusher Dostra Time on Warp. There you go. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.